Welcome Grade 12 Mindset is finally, it's your chance. If you've been watching since Grade 10, which I hope that you all have been, um, this should be your third hour in and you've been having a fantastic time. Liesl's taking us today, she's going to be chatting about finance. Yes, yes guys, what we're going to be doing is we're going to start off by just revising some of the finance that you did in Grade 11. So we're going to be looking at the simple and the compound interest formula, which is actually from Grade 10, come to think of it. Then we're going to go a little bit further and we're going to look at how to solve some things that are ever so slightly more tricky. Bound to be a lot of fun and a good basis for your finance, which is going to go forth from here. Fantastic. So you guys all better be joining in. Join us on Facebook and Twitter. And we just want to say a big thank you to Liberty for sponsoring the show. You guys are fantastic. It's this lovely set. So yeah, let's take a break and we'll be back with you shortly. See you now. Welcome back, Grade 12. So happy that you're joining us. I know that all of you wait and wait for this session. I know whenever we start Grade 12, the page just explodes. So this is a quick hello from all of us here at Mindset Learn to you guys sitting there on your couches at home, and you hope you guys are tuning in. So I want to say a quick hello to Mika. You're watching. I hope you're having a great day, Mika, and I hope you enjoy the show. Let's get straight to it. Liesl, take it away. Right guys, so the start of today's lesson is a little bit of a blast from the past. We're going to have a look at the simple interest formula, also at the compound interest formula, but then we're going to move on to some slightly more difficult things that we wouldn't have necessarily been able to do in grade 11. Right, so I've got our simple interest formula on the board here for us. We've got A equal to P bracket 1 plus I times N. So let's just talk quickly about what everything stands for. A is our end amount. So if you are investing money, A is the amount that you will receive at the end. P is our principal or our initial amount. So that would be the amount of money that goes into the bank at the start of your whole savings venture. I is our interest rate, guys. And remember that interest rate by definition is out of 100. So if I say to you 10%, you don't put 10% into the formula. You remember that 10% is 10 out of 100 and therefore you write it as 0, 0,10. N stands for our time period and we know that we're going to be calculating N whenever we see the words how long. Okay. So let's have a look at our first example. It's a relatively simple one. We didn't make a story about it. I just gave you the information as it is. Right, so our end amount is a thousand rand. So in the end, after our investment, we end up with a thousand rand. Initially, we invested 500 rand. Our interest rate is 12%. And if the question had a story attached to it, it would have said something along the lines of, simple interest because remember guys we have to clue you in as to which formula you have to use so the story would have said simple interest and let's have a look at how we would approach it there is our formula and the first thing I'm going to do is just substitute into my formula well a pen would be good substitute into the formula now as you guys can see my unknown over here is in if there was a story attached to this particular question, I would have said something like, well, let's think of a story. Let's say that um, Indiana invests 500 Rand at 12% per annum, simple interest. She gets 1,000 Rand at the end of her investment. How long did this take? That would be a perfectly legitimate story. Let's have a look at substituting in our information. So remember guys, units only need to be put in in the end, so I'm not going to put the RAND sign in at the moment. I'm going to say 1,000 is equal to my initial amount, which is 500, and then open my bracket, 1 plus, and now my interest rate is 12% per annum simple interest, but remember that would be 0, 0,12, and that is multiplied by n. 
I don't know why I always manage to do this, but I always run out of space in the end. Right, so in this case, it's not difficult to solve for n because n is in the linear. So what I mean by that is n is in the same straight line as all of my other amounts. Obviously, you guys will know that it gets a little bit more complicated when I'm using the compound interest formula because then, of course, n is in the exponent. Now, there's various different ways that you can go about solving this. I would probably start by dividing both sides by 500. So I will do that. And 1,000 divided by 500 obviously is 2. So now I have got on this side 1 plus 0, 0,12 n. I'm going to take the 1 over to the other side and subtract it. I hope you guys are still following. So then I have got 0, 0,12 n is equal to, and on this side I have 1. And of course, now I need to divide by 0, 0,12 on both sides. So let's bring up our calculator. And I'm going to say 1 divided by 0, 0,12 equals, and that would be, my answer is 8,3. Now remember, when we're dealing with, with simple interest, we're always working in years. So that means that this interest rate, if it's simple interest, it's going to take a whole eight years to double your money, which is, not, which is not the greatest because your money probably won't be worth that much after that. But guys, a very, very simple example of calculating N in a simple interest context. Now, we're going to have a look at when things get a little bit more complicated and we're going to move on to compound interest. Indiana, just over to you for a second. Are our students... Understanding? Yes, they are. We've got a whole bunch of new mindsets here on the page, and they are loving it. Um, I just wanted to say welcome to Michael and welcome to Sofiso. Sofiso is our newest mindsetter. Um, but without further ado, I just want to let you guys know that we are giving away Casio calculator today. We've given away two so far in the grade 10 and 11 shows, and now grade 12s. It's your time. All you need to do is make sure that you post questions. If there's anything that Liesl isn't... If there's anything you're just not understanding what Liesl's talking about, rather, before I say something rude, get those questions in and let me know so I can ask Liesl. So, Liesl, back to you. Right, guys. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look at the very same question using the same amounts, but this time in a compound interest context. So, our compound interest formula, of course, is A is equal to P, 1 plus I, to the power n. So now our n is in the exponent, which is going to make things slightly more complicated. Now once again, I'm going to put a context to this question. I'm going to say, well now, let's say Mika invests 500 Rand at 12% per annum, compound interest, so that's per annum. Um, in the end, she receives 1,000 Rand how long was Mika's money invested for? Right, now, we're going to see that things now get ever so slightly more complicated. I'm going to start off by just substituting into the formula. Right, so again, I'm going to say 1,000. Again, a pen would be good. 1,000 is equal to 500... My interest, remember that it's as a decimal, so that's 1 plus 0, 0,12, that's 12%. And my unknown n is now in the exponent. Okay, so once again, I'm going to do a little bit of work, just manipulate this expression a little bit, so that I at least have the same things on the same side. So similar to what, I'm, what I did just now, let's divide by 500 on both sides. And in fact, boys and girls, a bit of a warning here. This is something that I sometimes see at school or when I'm marking matric papers and maths teachers find it very, very upsetting. Guys, whatever you do, do not multiply this 500 into the bracket because 
that bracket is to the power n. You cannot now multiply that 500 into the bracket because the 500 was never to the power n to start with. So please guys, don't do that. We'll divide both sides. That'll be much better. So I get a 2 over here. And then, of course, my 500s cancel. Inside my bracket, I can add the 1 to the 0, 0,12. So that gives me 1, 1,12 to the power n. Now, this is the point, boys and girls, where we need a little bit more knowledge than we had in grade 11 in order to solve this. In grade 11, you would have used a method called trial and error, or some teachers call it trial and improvement, and you would have kept on substituting different values for n into, until you got as close as possible to 2. So that's what we would call trial and error. You'd start with 1, then you'd maybe try 1,2, 1, 1,4, until you got relatively close to 2, and then you could say, all right, now that's the end of the story. However, in grade 12, we will expect of you a more accurate answer. And this is where our log laws come into play for the first time. Now let's just scroll down over here. Let's have a look at this example 3. If I said to you in grade 11 or even in grade 9, 2 to the x is equal to 8, you would have said to me, well, this is not a problem at all. What I need to do is I need to get my bases the same on either side. So, I would say 2 to the power x is equal to 2 to the power 3. Now, because my bases on either side is a 2, it is now possible for me to cancel out the bases, let's color them in there, and then to say, okay, x is therefore equal to 3. So that's fine. But let's have a look at the example on the right-hand side because that poses a bit more of a problem. 2 to the power x is equal to 7. Now, I cannot use the same method that I used on that side because there, I do not know what power of 2 will give me 7 and it definitely won't be an exact number. And this is why we are taught our log laws. And that's really the main reason why we learn logarithmic um, manipulations is so that we can know the third log law. Now the third log law says to us, if I have the logarithm of any number to the power x, like that, I can do the following operation with no consequence. I can say that is equal to, now I can take that x and I can bring it to the front. So, on your calculator, it will be exactly equivalent if I write this as x log a. So, that's a little trick. Some teachers even teach you guys how to do this in grade 11 already so that you can avoid all of that trial and improvement. So, for instance, if I have log of 2, or ra let's rather do it this way, wait a minute. If I have log of 8, I'm allowed to say that the log of 8 is the same as the log of 2 to the power 3, because of course 2 to the power 3 is equal to 8, and I am then allowed to write it as 3 log 2. Okay, so this, is the only, this, this log law is going to help us to solve for n in our compound interest formula. But just quickly, let's have a look then how I'm going to use logs to solve this particular one. Let's just rub out all of our writing. Okay, so what, what you guys should know by now is in an equation, I, as long as I do the same thing to every term in the equation, I am not changing the integrity of the equation. So, what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to introduce a log on the left-hand side, okay? Now, if I did it only on the left-hand side, that would be problematic, right? So, I also have to put in a log on the right-hand side, okay? So, that's log 7. Let's just write it like that. 
to preserve the integrity of the equation. Now, as I showed you guys before, I am now allowed to do the following. Ka-ching, put the x in front, and I get x log 2 is equal to log 7. Right, so I haven't changed anything about my equation. Everything is still even Steven on both sides. Now I'm going to isolate the x, so I'm going to say x is equal to log 7 over log 2. Right, so let's bring up our calculator. Clear it there. Oops. All I wanted to do was clear it. Oh, it seems to. There we go. Right, so I'm going to say log 7 over log 2. Log 7. Close my bracket. Move downstairs. Log 2. Close that bracket. Equals. And that, the answer that I get is 2,8. Now, to me, that actually makes perfect sense because if you guys think about my original question that said 2 to the power x is equal to 7, if I said that x is 2, then my left-hand side of my equation is 2 to the power 2, which is 4, which is not even close to 7, right? The next integer that I could have used would have been 3, so then... 2 to the power of 3 is equal to 8. That's a little bit more than what I need, but it's closer. So therefore, that answer of 2 to the power of 8 makes perfect sense to me. So guys, let's get back to our actual example over here before I started scribbling all over the show. So once you know the trick, it really it shouldn't be too much of a trauma. I am now going to take another color pen. Why not? Let's take pink. It's my favorite. Put a log on the left-hand side. Put a log on the right-hand side. Then I'm going to use the third log law, which says as long as there's a log, I'm allowed to bring that exponent to the front. So this right-hand side becomes n log 1,12 and log 2 on this side. And now, in order to get n on its own, I'm going to divide both sides by log. 1, 1, 2. Of course, guys, you don't have to show as many steps as I am. I'm just making sure that I don't get problems from Indiana because our students are not understanding. <laughs> right, so back to our calculator. We'll clear it. Fraction jobby. And we're going to say log of 2. Close the bracket. Divided by log of 1, comma, oh, Indiana, I hate it when that happens. 1, comma, 1, 2, close the bracket again. And our answer is 6, comma, <coughs> 1, 1. So, if you guys just think again about the context of the question, the first example that I used, I used simple interest, right? And it took more than eight years for the money to double. In the second example, I used compound interest. It was still 12%. And now the time needed to double the money has actually come down to six years. So definitely, if you are investing, it looks like compound interest would be your best bet. Right, guys, over to Indiana, and then we're going to take a short break. How's it going? Fantastic. It's going really well, other than my little coughing attack that I'm trying to very quietly have here in the corner. <laughs> Guys, I know that a few of you got the wrong answer, but that's okay. It's okay if you post the wrong answer. Um, it's all about learning. It's all about trial and error, and you're never going to learn unless you make mistakes. That's what I say. What we're going to do is we're going to take a quick break, and I'm going to go through all of your answers on the page with Liesl, have a little chat with her, um, and maybe we can work something out. You know what? We'll see you after the break. <laughs> Hi, Grade 12 Mindsetters, and welcome back. Hope you're having a fab show. I know that we're having a great amount of fun in here. Guys, please, 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 if there's anything that you're struggling with, make sure that you tell me exactly where you've gotten lost so I can just relay it to Lisa as soon as it comes through. Okay, so we've got some questions here. The first one is from Michael, and what Michael wants to know is, is it also correct 
When you put your final n equals answer in years and months, example n equals two years and three months. Liesel? Not only is it correct, Indiana, Michael, well done, it is actually more correct. Now, in most questions, if they just ask you to calculate for n, as I did here before, 6,116 years rounded to whatever they tell you to round to would be fine. However, and Michael has, Michael has a very good point there, sometimes they do ask us to put our answers in years and months. And of course, then, if we want all of the marks, we have to do that. Now, if we have a look at this one over here, we've got six... I don't know why my calculator keeps on disappearing. Okay, let me just make space here first, and then we'll start worrying about the calculator. Right. So we've got 6,1162553374. Right. Now, we don't really have to worry about the six, because the six is a full six years. So what I'm going to do is from here, I'm going to subtract six. And I'm going to say to myself, well, look, I already know six years, so that's not a problem. And then what I'm going to do with the rest of this answer is I'm going to remember that this is a fraction of a year. So this is 0, 0,116 of a year. And how many months does a year have? I'm going to multiply this by 12. So... Wait, hang on a second, um, Indiana, I think I might have, made, might have made a mistake here. But anyway, guys, so, sorry, my computer is letting me, my health data is letting me down. What you will do is you will take the fraction part of your answer and multiply that by 12 to get your number of months. Okay, so we'll try that again just now, Indiana. Right, what else? Okay, so now this one is from Musa, and it's got to do with the question that we've just gone over, guys. He was a bit confused um, why we divided by 500. Why we divided by 500. Now, Musa, that's actually a very good question. What we had is we had 1,000 here equal to 500. And then we had inside the bracket 1,12 to the power n. Now, I actually mentioned this to you guys. Guys, you can't just multiply the 500 into that bracket because that bracket is to the power n. The 500 is not to the power n. So, if you were to multiply the 500 into that bracket, that would be highly illegal, like driving without a driver's license. So, what we need to do, and because it's an, an equation and we need to isolate the unknown, the reason I divided by 500 was so that I could get these guys on their own. And we say, in a way, that's kind of similar to having 2x is equal to 10. It's a slightly more complicated, but you're dividing both sides by 2 so that you can get your unknown entity to be on its own. So please, it is okay. I just want to qualify this, though, um, in case you guys start saying that I'm telling you lies. If I am using the simple interest formula, that is completely a different story. So if I had a thousand is equal to 500, 1 plus 0,12n, this would have been absolutely fine to multiply the 500 into the bracket because can you guys see? There is no exponent at the top of the bracket, or we can say there's an invisible one, but the 500 then, for that matter, also has the invisible one. So you can do it if you are using the simple interest formula. Please, not with the compound interest formula. Make sure that you isolate your unknown. Right, Indiana, I hope that's helped. Musa, what else? Yeah, do you okay, so this is still, Boyson wants to know, I hope this is a good question, Boyson, else I'm going to be very embarrassed. <laughs> it happens, but it's okay, I ask all the questions anyway. Boyson, how do we write 6.123 in two years? How do we write? 6.123 in two years. In two years? Yes, maybe. I, don't I, mean, I think maybe he means in two years. So that's what I discussed just now, I'll get back to that. We say that the 6 is already 
in years and we then take our decimal part and we multiply by 12. Okay. Okay, that makes total sense. Okay, so yeah. it's not in two years, it's, it's like in, in two, two years. years. So we <laughs> take the decimal part of our fraction and we multiply by 12. Right, Indiana, if those are all the questions we've got yep. for the moment. Let's get going. Let's get going with our next question. Now, guys, we've been going easy on you. The questions have been simple. Let's have a look. And I think perhaps we should be giving away our calculator to somebody who can get this one right. What do you think, Indiana? Why, why not, guys? Let's, let's do it. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. All right, well, let's do getting to my question first. Right. So here's my question, guys. Bongani invests 750 rand at an interest rate of 12% per annum compounded quarterly. How long will it take for his investment to double? There's a lot of doubling of investments going on in tonight's lesson. Right. So there's a couple of things that we need to think about in this question. Firstly, we are talking about compound interest so we're going to be using the compound interest formula so that's the first thing that I'm going to write down is my compound interest formula a is equal to p 1 plus i to the power n now for the first time in tonight's show and I maybe I perhaps need to remind you guys of this we have a different compounding period than a year now, they say specifically that our interest is compounded quarterly. Now, what does that mean? It means that instead of waiting until the end of a year before you get your interest, you get a portion of that interest every quarter. So that would be four times a year. Now, just quickly, let's run through that again. If I say quarterly... What I need to do is take my interest and divide it by 4. If I say buy or semi-annually, that means twice a year. So buy or semi. My interest is divided by 2. Then the other common ones that we do get is daily. Now if we say that our interest uh, is compounded daily, we assume that a year has got 360 five days. So therefore, daily would be my interest rate divided by 365. So that means you get a minuscule portion of your interest every single day. And I think the other co common one that we of often use is, the other one that we co commonly use I think is monthly. So let's put that one in. Well, I think you guys should be able to remember it. And anyway, I've run out of space. So Quarterly divided by 4, buy or semi-annually divided by 2, daily divided by 365, and monthly divided by 12. Right. Now, there's something very important that we have to remember whenever we are dealing with a compounding period, which is not yearly. Okay? If I make my interest quarterly, then I'm taking my interest rate and I'm dividing it by 4. But then I would have to multiply my n by 4. So very important that my, my interest rate and my time periods always have to match up. So in this particular question, I need to remember that the answer that I get is no longer in years because I'm working in quarters. It is now in quarters of years. So if I get an answer of 8, that doesn't mean 8 years. It means 8 Quarters, which is actually two years. So we just need to bear that in mind. Right, so let's substitute in our information. If Mongani is doubling his investment, what is going to happen is 750 Rand doubles. That shouldn't be too hard. That's not enough to win the prize, Indiana. <laughs> 1,500 Rand over there. Right, his principal or initial amount is 750 rand. Right, into my bracket, 1 plus, now my interest rate as a decimal, lots of 12s going on here, but it has to be divided by, oh, everything to the power n. Right, 
So far, so good. Now, Musa, I hope you're watching because, again, please note that I'm now going to divide both sides by 750. I cannot multiply 750 into that bracket because 750 is not to the power n, so that just won't be cool. Divide by 750 both sides, I get a 2 on my left-hand side. And for those of you that love using your calculators, let's do it. Let's clear that. And we're going to say 1 plus fraction 0 0.12 divided by 4. And our answer is 1,03, which of course you should know, but I just like to show off that I can use the calculator. Right, so that's equal to 1,03 to the power n. And now, of course, comes the part where I have to do my little trick. And even if you're in grade 11 and you're watching, it's maybe just nice to know next year you're going to learn about logarithms. And the trick is always with equations. Remember, whatever I do on the left, I also have to do on the right. So everything has to be treated equally. I'm going to put a log in over there and a log in over there. Right, I'm running out of space. If I then take that in and I move it to the front and... If I take that in and I move it to the front, sorry, oh my goodness, I'm trying to make my page longer, but that's not really working here. Is it? Okay. Guys, we've got a gremlin. Oh no. Indiana. Okay, there we go. There you go. There we go, there we go. There I was go. about to okay. take you to a break, but not right. to worry. Right, no, not to worry. <laughs> <laughs> right, guys, so now if I take the in to the front and I divide both sides by log 1,03, I'm going to get my answer. So let's have a look. I'll use a different color. I'm going to say n is equal to. So now the n is in front there. Log 2 over log 1,03. Now some of you are probably thinking, but why aren't I using another function on my calculator, guys? You can do this. Let me just show you. If you use this function on your calculator, that one, it has exactly the same effect. So I can put the bottom one, the 1,03 in there, and then I can move across and put the 2 over there. It comes down to the same thing. And my answer is 23,44,97. Now, guys, if this was yours, and I have to wait 23 years to double 750 rand, well, I don't even want to tell you how old I'm going to be, but I'll definitely be using a walking stick. So, this is not years. This is quarters. So, it'll take 23 comma some change quarters for Bongani to double his money. So, now I'm going to divide by four. If it makes it easier for you, you can actually replace that n with a 4n if it's quarterly or a 2n if it's biannually and so forth. But I like to just remember, so let's go divide by four. Liesl, I think a lot of mindsets is when, they, when you said quarters, I think they went, ah. Oh. I think it's just that old perception about fractions. Fractions are just ordinary numbers and we really need to stop discriminating against them. Right, so there we go. Divide by four. And that actually takes 5,86 years. So that is, that is pretty close to six years, but that's a lot better than... 23 years, of course. Right, um, Indiana, well, you that know. was our next example, and, and I, I'm just wondering on the social media whether anybody got close. I think you and I better have a look during the break. You know what? They know. I know they're all, they're all shouting and screaming. Guys, the page went wild, so thank, thank you, Liesl, for doing that, because I was very busy behind it. They literally have been sending those questions through my, my screen. I actually did a bit of like a glitch. That's how many questions and answers, I mean, how many answers we got. And I see a whole bunch of you have got them right for Kozi, Lebohang, you guys know who you are. But what I need to do is during the break, we need to find the first person and, you know, do this fairly. So we'll let you know after the break, guys. Don't leave those seats. See you now. Welcome back, Mindset is grade 12s. I know you're all having a fun lesson because I can tell that because of 
so it shows on the page. Guys, I'm still going through the answers. I don't want to give, you know, unfairly. I want everyone to be fair. So I'll let you know who wins the Casio calculator at the end of the lesson. I'll be posting it on the Facebook page. I'm not saying it out loud. So keep your eyes peeled to the page. I just want to let um, Miguel know. He just let us know that we said his name wrong. It's Miguel and not Miguel. So, Liesl, next time, next time we know, Miguel. Next time we know. Sorry about that. Alright guys, so we're still busy with the business of Pongani and we had a look at Pongani and it took him uh, five, uh, five, five and a bit years, I think five years and ten months to double his money on 12% per annum compound interest which was compounded quarterly. Now, guys, this is why finance is so important because one day all of you guys are going to have a lot of money, hopefully you won't be teachers. And you're going to have money to invest and you need to be a savvy investor. Now let's say Bongani had no idea what was going on and he walked into another bank and the other bank said to him, Hey, listen Bongani, here's a deal for you, 15% per annum, simple interest. Now Bongani needs to be able to do the maths, to do the calculations, to see which of the two is a better deal. Guys, we cannot say that 15% per annum is necessarily better than our 12% um, compounded quarterly, we need to look and see whether we get this, how long it takes. And obviously, if it, if it takes less time for him to double his money on the simple interest deal, that would be to, the way to go. But the trick is that you have to know how to do it. So let's have a look. I'm getting my pen out and I'm now writing down the simple interest formula again. A is equal to P. 1 plus i n. Right, Musa, this is the one where you can multiply in. Right, so we're going to go with the same amount of money. We're saying that he wants to end up with 1,500 rand. He is starting with 750 rand. Right. Interesting thing, guys, perhaps I should mention this at this point. If this question wasn't related to the other question where I used Bungani again, and you didn't know that it was 750 Rand that doubles into 1,500 Rand, you could just use your end amount to be 2 and your initial amount to be 1 because that's double. Or you can use 2x and x, or you can use 20 Rand and 10 Rand, same story. Right, but anyway, we'll, we'll stay true to Bungani's whole story here. Now I'm going to say 1 plus i. I is my interest rate. Remember the interest rate has to be a decimal. Otherwise he's going to double his money super quick. Now N is my unknown over here. I am now, if I really, really want to, allowed to multiply the 750 into that bracket. But guys, that'll be messy. What I'm going to do is divide both sides by 750. I think that's going to be much easier. And I'm going to get a 2 on that side because 1,500 divided by 750 is 2. And then on this side, I am left with 1 plus 0, 0,15n. Now what I'm going to do is take that over immediately. Right, so on the right-hand side, I get 2 minus 1, which of course is not rocket science. That's 1. And this is then my equation that I have to solve. 0, 0,15n equal to 1. So out comes our Casio calculator. Clear it, and I'm going to say 1, not 11, 1, divided by 0, 0,15. Right, now, uh, the answer here is 6, 6666. 6, 6, 6. So that's 6 years, pretty much 6.5 years, guys. Now remember the answer to the previous one. That was 5 years and 10 months. So actually, even though the interest rate appears to be higher, because it is simple interest and because the previous one was compound interest and I got a little bit of interest um, every quarter, it actually works out that the previous deal was the better deal. So guys, that's why it's so important that we understand how our finance works so that we can pick the best deals for ourselves. Right, now... Let's have a look at what else I've got in store for you. Oh, that's right. We also need to talk tonight about depreciation. 
And I'm just going to try, there we go, and find my slide on that. Right, guys. We've, we've had a look at our simple interest formula. We've had a look at our compound interest formula. Now we also have to look at some um, straight line depreciation. We've misspelled that. This is straight line depreciation. Let's just fix that. Although simple line depreciation is not too bad. So straight line depreciation. And the second formula is reducing balance depreciation. Reducing balance. Now guys, let's just quickly talk about the meaning of the word depreciation. If I buy a brand new car today and I pay 200,000 Rand for it, do you guys think that in 10 years time that car is still going to be worth 200,000 Rand? Guys, unless it is some sort of a cool vintage car, chances are that my car is going to be worth a lot less in 10 years time. That is because any asset that we purchase depreciates. Depreciates means it loses value. Right. Now, we get two types of depreciation. The first type of depreciation is our straight line depreciation. And what you guys must see is that this formula is similar to the simple interest formula. Um, the only thing is that it has a minus in it, right? Now, the straight line depreciation, if you're an accountant, is usually used to depreciate things that eventually are going to have zero value. Now, let's think of computers. Indiana's using a lovely modern computer over there. Do you guys think in 20 years' time anybody is going to want that computer? In fact, guys, if your mom or dad offers you their old computer, which is 10 years old already, are you going to want it? No. Because the world of technology is changing so quickly, anything in the electronics world depreciates very, very quickly, and an accountant has to get to the point where they can say, okay, no, this is now worth absolutely nothing. So generally, straight line depreciation, unless they tell you otherwise, are for things like computers and fax machines and all those sort of smaller things that you use around the office. Now, when an asset is depreciated using reducing balance depreciation, what will happen is the, initially the asset will depreci depreciate quite steeply, but it will become less, less, and less, and it will never actually, um, it will never actually be zero exactly. So this one has got a straight line. Let me just get a color for us here. If you guys think in terms of your graphs, straight line depreciation, look, eventually it's going to be at zero. Whereas reducing balance depreciation is never going to quite hit zero because the, the, it's going to get closer and closer and closer and closer to zero. So the x-axis is actually going to act as an asymptote. Now, what sort of asset will I depreciate using reducing balance depreciation? Well, what you need to think of, guys, is things that are more expensive, like big trucks or bulldozers or um, cranes that are used on building sites. Those things can be used for a very, very, very long time. And even eventually, when they are not of any use to use as a crane or to use as a bulldozer, those things contain a lot of metal and they can actually be sold for scrap. So big, big expensive things are usually depreciated using the, re the reducing balance method. Now, I'm going to have a look here quickly. I did have one more question. See if it's on here. Indiana, the computer is fighting. Don't worry. You fight the computer. I'll chat to the mindset. Yeah, it was. I just had my question here a second okay, ago. Okay, there you go, Diesel. Is it gone again? <laughs> I, I shouldn't have even Got started it. talking. So again, the question says how long. Now guys, whenever we see how long, we've got to know that we are dealing with N. And they say, how long will it take for a bucky with 120,000 Rand to depreciate to a third of its value 
at 11% per annum depreciation. Now, guys, usually when it gets to depreciation, unless they state otherwise, we only depreciate on an annual basis, which is a good thing because otherwise it'll mean even if you've only had your car for two seconds, it's already depreciated. Now, we are running out of time, and Indiana, I do still want some comments from our viewers about tonight's lesson, so I'm going to race through this one. Now, it didn't exactly say in the question that it is reducing balance, but because it's a bucky, I'm going to go with the reducing balance. I'm going to put into the place of my final amount, I have to put what is this bucky worth in the end? And this is where people often make a mistake. So a third of 120,000, that means 120,000, divided by three. So your smaller amount comes over here because in the end, the bucky is only going to be worth 40,000 rand. My initial amount is 120,000 rand. Right, add one minus 0, 0,11 to the power n. Now, once again, what I'm going to do, I'm going to divide both sides by 120,000. So that in the end, I will get a third on the left-hand side, and then you will apply your log law. Now, guys, we are kind of running out of time, and I just want Indiana to get a chance to give a last shout-out to some of our viewers over there. So, Indiana, over to you. Okay, guys, I can't believe that this lesson has gone so fast as usual. These all, they just fly by, it seems. Um, guys, the grade 12s are fantastic. The page has been inundated with your requests and with you guys chatting to each other. I love that. Please keep doing that. Once the show is finished, and if there's any questions on the page that you might go, hey, I understand what's going on, please answer them. Help um, fellow mindsetters out. That's exactly what it's supposed to be. Um, yeah, well, actually, I think... Indiana, I've just heard from our producer, I'm very sorry, that actually, we do have another five minutes, which is super. Okay, Because fantastic. at least I can finish <laughs> this question on the bucky. So, let's get right to it. We'll just and then, and then as long as you leave me a minute to, to talk about the prize, Lisa. Oh, of course we need yeah. to still talk about the prize. Right. So, I'm just going to make a little bit of space here, and I'm going to just show you guys, I'm going to work upwards, which is... Slightly unconventional, but what the hell. Right, so I'm going to say 1 minus 0, 0,11. So that gives me over here, and I'll do that in a different color. 1 minus 0, 0,11 is going to give me 0, 0,89. To the power n is equal to a third. The reason it's a third is because, of course, I divided by both sides by 120,000 rand. Right. I'm so thankful that we didn't, <laughs> we didn't have to leave this question in the air after all. Right. So, guys, what we're going to do now is what I've shown you before, the little trick to get out a different color pen to make it more fun. I'm going to add a log in on either side. You don't have to show this whole process. I'm just doing it because some of you might still be new to it. I'm then going to take that in and bring it to the front. So it doesn't have to look quite so ugly. Right, log. I'm putting the N in front and I am now erasing it over there. Now what I can do is I can isolate my N. In other words, I can get N on its own on the one side so that I can get to my answer. And that is going to be, let's have a look, n is equal to log a third divided by log 0, 0,89. Okay, now guys, the main purpose of tonight's lesson was to show you that once you are on the trick and once you guys know that you can use the logs, it's no longer necessary to use trial and error or trial and improvement. Okay, so we can actually get an exact answer. Obviously, what you will do now is put this into your calculator and that will give you the number of years that it's going to take for this bucky to depreciate to a third of its value. That is, of course, if the rate of depreciation stays 11%. Now, guys, it's been really fun listening to all of your comments tonight. Um, I've had a great time explaining 
this section to you. I'm going to hand over to Indiana so we can say cheerio from both of us. Fantastic, guys. Guys, thank you so much for, um, for just being here with us. We absolutely love hearing your feedback, how much you've been enjoying the show, and Liesl, they have enjoyed the show thoroughly. Okay, so guys, I know we're going to have lots of shouting and lots of um, arguing, but I don't want any of that. I want none of that mindsets, because mindsets are happy for other mindsets when they, w when they win prizes. Okay, so the, the first person who actually got the first answer in is Tatu. Tatu Dire. I hope I'm saying the surname right. Um, and Tatu got 5.86 um, years, so which is five years and 10 months. So guys, Tatu is the winner. Tatu, I'm going to let you know where you can send your email address over on Facebook. I mean, that's another thing, guys. Never put your own email address or numbers on the page. Please, please, please. Um, Liesl, thank you so much for a fab, fab lesson. Um, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Grade 12 Mindsetters, thank you so much for joining us. Um, yeah, guys, tomorrow don't forget that we also have science on. And also for you guys, if you guys have any friends that take IT, we've just launched a new IT, all the new IT programs on our website, which is www.mindsetlearn. Actually, let me just double check that one before I give it out. The wrong one. <laughs> Mindset.co.za slash learn extra that's our website and what you can get from there you can get amazing x sheets just go and type in the subject and the topic that you're looking for there's lots of awesome cool free downloads as well as videos that you can watch tomorrow um yeah guys as well maybe before i forget i'm actually getting shouted at but they deserve they deserve due thanks where thanks is due liberty thank you so much for making this happen and allowing us to have such an awesome show. Grade 12s, don't forget, Learn Extra Live is on tomorrow and join us next week, same time, same place. Bye guys.